baptism hmm, is good, but it does not save us. <laughs> huh? It doesn't save us. It's the answer of a good conscience, but it does not save. So baptism in water does not save you. You said water don't save nobody? Mm. You want us to explain 1 Peter? 1 Peter. Right. All right, let's explain that. Amen. Is that 1 Peter 3, 21 you want? 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 20. All right, let's kind of go in reverse and go up to verse 20. Verse 20. Let's see the comparison that the mm. apostle made That's right. with baptism and Noah. <laughs> That's, That's right. Are you listening? Go ahead. Glory Amen. to God. Listen at this. First Peter chapter 3 and at verse 20. All right. With some time with disobedience. With some time with disobedience. When once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. Yes. While the ark was a prepared. Now remember television viewer, you said water don't save nobody. Nobody. All right. We shall see. While the ark was a preparing, mm -hmm. wherein few, that is eight souls, How were, they saved in Noah's day? were saved by water. All right, let's look at the comparison that the apostle made of the salvation of water. Mm -hmm. All right. The theological debate between Pastor Gino Jennings and Apostle Mary Blake represents a significant discussion within Christianity, touching upon essential doctrines and practices such as the necessity of water baptism for salvation and the role of women in preaching and church leadership. This debate encapsulates broader issues of scriptural interpretation, tradition, and the evolving nature of church practices in response to contemporary cultural shifts. Both Jennings and Blake hold deeply rooted beliefs that reflect their commitment to their understanding of Christian doctrine and its application in the lives of believers. Pastor Gino Jennings advocates for the necessity of water baptism as a critical component of salvation. He bases his argument on several key scriptural passages that emphasize the importance of baptism in the New Testament. Mark 16:16 16, 16 is often cited by Jennings. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever believes will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. This verse explicitly links belief and baptism to the process of salvation, suggesting that both are necessary components of a true Christian faith. Jennings also references Acts 2.38, where Peter addresses the crowd on the day of Pentecost, saying, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For Jennings, these passages clearly establish that baptism is not merely a symbolic act, but an essential step in the journey of salvation. The like figure, in like manner. That's right. Unto even baptism. Even baptism is an outward sign of inward grace. Even baptism doeth also now save us. And what did he say? Baptism don't do what? Baptism does not save us. But what did the scripture say? Even baptism doeth also now save us. What did the writer say? He says baptism does not save you. What did the book of scripture say? Baptism doeth also now save what us. What did the writer say? Baptism does not save you. Something Only by grace. Wrong. Amen. Something is wrong. That's right. Jesus, come on back the third day. Glory to God right. and appear to his apostles mm -hmm. and told them that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. That's right. He taught them. That's right. Go ye in all the world. That's right. Preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. Amen. He that believeth Baptist. and is baptized Baptist. shall be saved. Baptist. He that believeth not shall be there. Right. Jesus was baptized as an example. That's right. That we should follow his steps. His steps. His steps. Right. Jennings points to the consistent practice of the early Christian church as further evidence of the importance of baptism. The book of Acts provides numerous examples of new believers being baptized immediately upon their conversion. In Acts 8, Philip baptizes the Ethiopian eunuch after explaining the gospel to him, and in Acts 16, Paul and Silas baptize the Philippian jailer and his household following their profession of faith. These instances underscore the immediate and indispensable nature of baptism in the early church community. Furthermore, Jennings emphasizes the spiritual significance of baptism. Drawing on Paul's teachings in Romans 6, 3, 4, he argues that baptism represents a believer's identification with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. This passage highlights the profound spiritual reality that baptism signifies, 
marking the believer's transition from an old life of sin to a new life in Christ. I want to make it very clear that he is not talking about water baptism. He's talking about being born of the water and the blood and the spirit. St. John 19 and 34. But one of the soldiers with a spear, this is Jesus on the cross. He took a spear and pierced his side. And forthwith came there out blood and water. Blood and water came out of Jesus' side. Apostle Mary Blake offers a contrasting view, arguing that salvation is achieved through faith in Jesus Christ alone, without the necessity of water baptism. Blake's position is rooted in passages such as Ephesians 2, 8, 9, which states, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Blake interprets this scripture to mean that salvation is a gift of God's grace received through faith independent of any physical act, including baptism. She might also reference the account of the thief on the cross in Luke 23, 39, 43, who expressed faith in Jesus and was assured by Christ that he would be with him in paradise, despite not having been baptized despite not having been baptized. This story is often cited by those who argue that faith alone is sufficient for salvation, illustrating that the thief's faith, rather than any ritual, secured his place in paradise. Blake emphasizes the concept of spiritual rebirth that occurs when an individual places their faith in Jesus. She believes that this rebirth, often referred to as being born again, is the true marker of a believer's salvation. In her view, water baptism is an outward sign of an inward reality, but not the determining factor of one's salvation status. Blake might draw on 1 Peter 3.21, which describes baptism as not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience toward God. She interprets this to mean that the physical act of baptism is secondary to the spiritual transformation that faith brings. Pastor Gino Jennings holds a traditional view regarding the role of women in preaching and church leadership. He believes that the Bible delineates specific roles for men and women within the church, with preaching and pastoral leadership being roles designated for men. Jennings often cites 1 Timothy 2, 12, where Paul states, I do not permit a woman to teach or to assume authority over a man. She must be quiet. Jennings interprets this passage as a clear directive that women should not hold positions of authority over men in the church including preaching roles. Jennings' interpretation is grounded in his commitment to maintaining what he sees as the biblical order of church leadership. He argues that adhering to this order is essential for the health and integrity of the church. For Jennings, the roles assigned to men and women are not a matter of cultural context, but of divine ordinance, meant to reflect the created order and the distinct roles given to men and women by God. He might also reference 1 Corinthians 14, 34, 35, where Paul instructs women to remain silent in the churches, reinforcing his stance that women should not occupy teaching or preaching roles. Jennings views these passages as normative for all Christian communities, regardless of cultural changes or contemporary perspectives on gender equality. The crux of the debate between Jennings and Blake is the issue of scriptural authority and how it should be interpreted and applied within the church. Jennings' emphasis on strict adherence to scriptural commands, particularly regarding baptism and gender roles, reflects a traditionalist approach that prioritizes literal and historical interpretations of the Bible. He believes that deviating from these interpretations leads to false doctrines and spiritual danger. In summary, the debate between Apostle Mary Blake and Apostle Gino Jennings on the necessity of water baptism for salvation highlights a significant theological divergence within Christianity. It brings to light the varying interpretations of Scripture and the importance placed on different aspects of faith and obedience in the journey of salvation.